Good morning, girls and guys. Hi, hello, my name is EJ, and I'm back again with another narrated art time lives video. Uh, this is the part two, the part two, this is part two of this sculpt that I'm doing, Agem's Mermaid. Uh, if you haven't had the chance to check out uh, part one, go check it out. Um, there were quite a lot of few conversations from part one um, that I talk about concerning this little project. So, um, I guess I could start out this particular video with some of the key takeaways from video one. Uh, some of the key takeaways is my big, big frustration with likeness. Um, and there's something to be learned from the first video is that I'm really frustrated with capturing the likeness of uh, any particular subject I'm doing. When, to, when it comes to 2D painting, I'm better at it. Um, I've gotten really good over the past few years just to toot my own horn <laughs> when it comes to portrait painting I've gotten pretty decent at it I'm not the best <laughs> okay but I've gotten better at it um, when it comes to sculpting likeness on 3d though that's needs quite a lot of work um, so yeah I was very frustrated with this particular project when it comes to like sculpting the likeness of my face or the likeness of my subject, which again, my subject is uh, A. Jim's draws uh, illustration, mermaid illustration, which I think he did for Mermaid, if I'm not wrong. So yeah, do check out his artwork, A. Jim's draws at Instagram. Um, I think that's his main um, portfolio slash artwork uh, art dump. So yeah, check him out. He's a really good artist. So. Uh, yeah, so that was really, I guess, the biggest takeaway from from part one, because uh, the majority of part one was just me reworking the face and over and over again. And uh, of course, Agem's draws helps me um, get a better likeness, which was great. Uh, the end product is closer to his original drawing than any of the ones that I tried. I went to like four different phases, basically. Um, so yeah, that's what happened. And if there's anything that I could impart knowledge wise from video one is that just be patient uh, when it comes to capturing the likeness. Uh, you will fail. I mean, if you're a beginner and you're trying to say uh, practice portrait painting or something, you will fail <laughs> just, just to let you know. Because when I was starting out with portrait painting, that was the case with me. I was failing a lot. And of course I gotten better. Um, when it comes to portrait, sculpting <laughs> obviously i need a lot more practice um as evidenced by um part one <laughs> of this video so um yeah the best advice i could give is just to be patient so but yeah so <laughs> that is uh some of the key takeaways from video one um, there were some other things that needed to talk about, which I guess it's a good thing for me to re-review from the first one. Uh, some of the things that I talked about was how my modeling of this particular subject is very uh, non-traditional, I guess is the best word that I could look for. Uh, most people, when they do their sculpting slash uh, character modeling in 3D, in digital 3D, they always turn on symmetry. And symmetry is very, very, very helpful. I mean, it knocks out your project in half, basically, because you don't have to sculpt the other half. You're just sculpting one half. Um, so yeah, it definitely makes things easy. Um, in this particular project, the only time I ever turned on symmetry was with the face when, when I was working on the face and that's it. Everything else I did separately. Uh, I, towards the end of the first video, I blocked things out where things were going to be. Um, and yeah, um, that's what I did differently. I mean, you could see the blocked out shapes right now, the full mermaid look. Um, it's obviously not sculpted yet. Um, the reason why I did it this way, where I didn't turn on symmetry, is because of, you know, rigging. I'm not as good with rigging as, you know, I am with sculpting, for example, and polymodeling. I mean, I would have to say that when it comes to strengths in 3D, digital 3D anyways, 
my strength definitely lies in sculpting and poly modeling. Uh, some of my knowledge is lacking in a lot of areas. Uh, that includes rigging. And so that was part of the reason why I decided, well, you know what, since my final project is just going to be static anyways, I'm not planning on animating it. I'm not planning on moving it. Um, I decided to just not rig the character. Um, so yeah, uh, it does have some side effects <laughs> for deciding not to do this. One of the biggest side effects of it is the hand, uh, which you, I it's being displayed right now actually the hand i was just modeling the left hand if i'm not wrong um honestly like around around 14 minutes i think is when it happens i decided to do a visible check on both hands just to check the size right like i wanted to make sure that the size of the left and the right hand looks the same so at around 14 minutes of this video i put the two hands together you know just to kind of do a visible check and i kid you not it looks so different it's kind of funny looking at them side by side you could definitely tell that i used two different sources to sculpt those hands so basically what ends up looking is that one hand looks more manly than the other because i think and i think it was this one that I used the girl's hand as a reference and I think the saluting hand I use my hand which I'm a dude so of course this is not gonna look you know girly at all uh, but yeah it it was very very interesting to see them together because it looks like two different hands from two different people you know but since they're separate in my illustration you can't tell the difference at all you know so I, I think that's like kind of like a unique situation. But yeah, anyways. Uh, so yeah, there are side effects for uh, doing things asymmetrically, uh, which is one of the side effects is that things will look off. And in this case, the hands are really off. They look great separate, you know? Um, so yeah, but put them together and it just looks really odd. So. But again, like I said, since I have no intention of animating this uh, character at all, it really wasn't that big of a deal. So yeah, again, like I said, in the overall illustration, it's very, it's hardly, hardly noticeable at all. So yeah. Um, and I guess, you know, since I'm talking about the hands, I, I will have to say that the hardest thing or the most time I spent sculpting, or my time sculpting was spent the most on the face, which that was pretty much all of part one was just me sculpting the face. Um, and then the hands, which isn't really surprising. Those are some of the hardest things to draw, even in 2D. Drawing faces is hard and drawing hands is hard. So, when it comes to sculpting them, it's not immensely surprising that I have a hard time um, figuring out how to sculpt them. Just because, yeah, they're just, you know, very difficult subject matter. And feet as well. <laughs> when it comes to drawing those three things, hands, uh, face, and feet, those are all difficult to draw. So sculpting them would also be difficult. I got lucky because obviously this is a mermaid. I don't have to do the feet. So yay. Bonus points. But yeah, anyways. So on this particular <laughs> uh, video now, since I've gone over some of the things that I wanted to go over from part one and well, um, yeah. <laughs> and what's going on in the video with the hands. Um, yeah, I guess I was going to start talking about the process in part two. So basically what happens in part two is that now that I've nailed the face for the most part, because I got a lot of help from agents at this point, uh, the rest of the sculpting just pretty much went easy. Uh, I already blocked all my shapes out in, in part one, which you saw me do in part one where I blocked out where the body was going to be, where I blocked out where the arms was going to be, and the fins and the tail and all that great jazzy stuff. <laughs> um, 
So basically, part two is just pretty much just going to be straight up sculpting all those blocks that I preset at the very, very beginning. Um, so the very first few minutes of this video, you saw me work some more on the face because I got some a few more advices from agents. And then after that, everything else is just pretty much straightforward where I take the block of shapes um, and then redefine some things polygonally first, kind of like the way I'm doing with his fingers right now, where I'm editing that polygonal model first, just so that I could place it correctly. And then as soon as it's placed correctly, then I started sculpting, which you see me do. And um, while I'm looking at this hand right now, I guess now is a great time to also talk about the way I'm modeling my hands. If I have symmetry on, if I rig the character first and then do um symmetrical modeling or symmetrical sculpting i wouldn't have to go through what i'm going through right now which basically i cut up my hand in different shapes so there's the shape of the palm there's the shape of the thumb and fingers so all together there's about six different shapes on here and then slowly i start combining them uh, with boolean, which I just did just now actually. I just um, combined the thumb with the palm uh, and then sculpted it. And then I'm going to slowly start uh, doing that with all of the hand, oh, the fingers. And I just did it with the pointing finger just now. Um, so yeah, that is my whole approach for the whole thing. Um, for pretty much all of the mermaid. Um, the arms, I did it that way with the hands, you know, where I separated the pieces, sculpted, pre-sculpted the pieces to get a general, you know, shape out of it. And as soon as I get a good shape, then I combine them and then sculpt them and refine them some more. So the way I set up my character is that the face is uh, separate from the arms. The blouse is separate from... Uh, those two and then the skirt is separate and then the f the tail is separate um, so the face I didn't have to separate um, separate the pieces except for the ears I actually did it with the ears where I modeled the ears separately from the face and then added the ears um, with the boolean um, the arms are a little bit blockier I did a blo much blockier approach um, well, the full arms, actually, I did a blockier approach than the face, where, you know, the upper arm is separate from the lower arm, and then the two upper, the upper arm and the lower arm are separate from the palm, and then separate from the fingers, and I slowly combined them as I kept sculpting. Um, I basically did this just so that I could um, have maximum placement because sometimes I'd like to be able to rotate my uh, object without other objects getting in the way for example in the case of the fingers I didn't you know I want to be able to rotate around one finger and sculpt it the way I want to sculpt it without having other fingers um, in the way and so that was part of the reason why I did this particular method um, where I slowly just combine things by boolean. So, um, again, it's kind of a NAND standard, NAND standard way of sculpting. But since, again, like I mentioned, my end product was just going to be, you know, for display. It's not going to be animated. Then I wasn't too concerned about, you know, doing it the right way. Oh, there it is. I'm trying to combine both hands together. And you can see... They look so different from each other. <laughs> it's kind of hilarious. But yeah. So anyways, uh, yeah, that's what you'll see me do for um, the rest of the video. Um, it's just me just slowly sculpting things one step at a time. Uh, and then eventually I combine everything all together into one big object just so that I could upload it into Sketchfab. So yeah.
Okay, I have to say that those arms look really, really good. <laughs> uh, this mermaid have way better looking muscles than I do. <laughs> That's all I can say. Um, but yeah, uh, so you can see that I finally have combined all the separate objects uh, of the arms. Uh, first I had the upper arm separate from the lower arm. And then of course does the arm separate from the palm and the fingers and you can see the great advantage of me having to separate those pieces out um like one of the things that i noticed with the arms was my first initials sculpt of it made the arms look way too bulky like like she had like way bigger muscles than she needed to be than it needed to be um for the most part most females don't even really aren't even really that well defined muscle wise uh, compared to guys, um, and if they are well defined muscle wise, they're definitely nowhere near as big as a guy's. Um, in the case of her biceps, even though her biceps are you know fairly nice looking and skinny, it's not like super bulky. Um, the, my first initial sculpt was bulkier than the final product so obviously I had to uh, do some edits on it and having those objects separate definitely helped a lot because then I was able to rotate around the upper arm and make it smaller without the lower arm getting in the way so um, again like I mentioned having all those separate pieces does have its advantages of course the disadvantage is that I have to do it twice the work um, simply because I didn't turn on symmetrical modeling. So, you know, caveats with each and every single step, but, um, but it really is all okay. Um, and it's funny how I gave her such nice biceps because in the end it was going to be covered by the sleeves anyway. So, uh, yeah, um, her upper arm is definitely good looking, but you can't tell because the sleeves are in the way. Which is fine. Um, but obviously I've moved on from the arms. I am now working in a blouse. Um, the blouse and any kind of clothing is always fun. I don't know what it is with sculpting folds in clothing. They're actually very, very cathartic. It's very zen. I don't know why, but I really like sculpting clothing. And, and the biggest thing, or the funniest thing is that um, by the time that I started sculpting in blouse, um, Pablo DiBarro's new brushes, um, Pablo DiBarro, I think this is his name, or Pablo, um, he is one of the programmers that's working on Blender right now, and his main focus is sculpting and improving the sculpting tools. And he, I think he was the one, who, well, he was, he definitely was the one who came up with the cloth clothing brush. Um, it's a brush that you know, helps you with sculpting clothing folds. And now you could actually see the icon on the left. I'm looking at the icon on the left. And um, by the time that I started sculpting the blouse, his brush has been released already, um, which I should have taken advantage of his brush, but I can't help myself, you know. Instead of taking advantage of that brush, I just went ahead and hand sculpted it myself. Just because it feels fun. I don't know. Um, the good thing about uh, the blouse that I sculpted is that I obviously have a uh, reference to look upon, which is Ajim's um, drawing, illustration. And it's not very obvious in his drawing, per se. Uh, he has very minimal folds in that illustration. But it kind of gave me a good enough indication as to how the clothing will fall if draped upon this particular body. So, yeah, um, having that reference was definitely a good help because then I'm able to realize that there's a see those two first two folds that I sculpted. I definitely got that as a reference from the illustration, which is really really obvious. Those were like the two biggest folds that is apparent in a Jim's drawing. And um, after I got those two folds, I kind of just 
ended up copying it over and over again in all the different parts of um, her blouse. Uh, obviously, the, the biggest challenge is the back because I didn't have a back reference, so I had to make that up. Um, but it wasn't really that difficult, in all honesty. Um, doing all this was fairly easy for the most part. And it was really fun. Like, I, I don't know why, but I just had fun um, sculpting all these folds. It's as much fun as sculpting muscles, uh, which is probably the reason why this girl had bigger muscles initially, because sculpting muscles are pretty fun, pretty fun too. So yeah, um, those are probably like my favorite things to sculpt aside from the face. So it's like face and then muscles and then clothing folds. They're all fun to digitally sculpt. So yeah.
Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so not too long ago, um, I did a few more edits on the face because um, I got a few more comments from Ajims uh, about things um, that he kind of noticed. Uh, one of the things he noticed was that the neck was too manly, it was too wide, so uh, I had to change that and edit that. Um, and the other thing that he mentioned was um, to give a tilt to the head. Because um, even though in his original illustration there really wasn't a tilt to the head, um, he, I, I'm assuming that this is what his reasoning for it was, um, giving the tilt to the head would give it a little bit more character and help break up the symmetry, you know, because it was just too symmetrical looking. Um, so yeah, he wanted like a tilt or he was suggesting a tilt. And I... Uh, 
I was like, wow, there's going to be a lot of work. I didn't want to have to rig the face. So, but I went ahead and, you know, followed through with his instructions and decided to use the tilt brush that Pablo has also created. Um, and it was funny because it was one of the first times that I've used a tilt brush. I'm really not familiar with it and I really don't know the mechanics of it very well. So I was experimenting. Um, but the way I understood Ajem's instructions was that he, I was thinking he wanted the tilt of the head to go towards the saluting hand, right? Um, and so that's what I was trying to do initially, but uh, parts of the face wasn't following through. So it was just like the nose would move, or the eyes would move, but then the ears wouldn't or something. So it was just looking odd. And so finally, on my last attempt at tilting the head, somehow I accidentally tilted the other way where the head was tilting away from the saluting hand. And I was like, I looked at it and I'm like, huh, that kind of looked cool. <laughs> like it was a totally unexpected tilt, right? Because I was trying to tilt it towards the saluting hand, but then instead it tilted away from it. And I was like, well, this is cool. I'm just going to run away with it, <laughs> right? Because Adrian's didn't really sp specify where to tilt it, you know? So I was like, I'm just going to run with this. And then I remember posting the resulting image and he was just like, well, that's an unexpected tilt. <laughs> so yeah, I thought it was kind of like a funny moment where we were both caught in surprise by the unexpected result of something that I did. So, but yeah. Uh, so I thought that was kind of like an interesting little footnote of what happened during the sculpt. Um, the rest of the sculpt is almost pretty straightforward. Um, the only, again, you know, the clothing folds and the skirt was done uh, very nicely. I had fun doing that. Um, and then the last thing that I did with the tail, which I'm kind of erasing now, um, there was a slight debate between Agents and I about whether to add uh, scales or not on the tail because um, I was afraid that it would make the um, um, having no scales like the way his original illustration was I felt like it was too plain looking and that it would look too just plain you know that I kind of wanted to add something to it so I decided to add scales right just to see what it would look like and Agems was right about it. Adding scales might get too busy and it did end up looking too busy um, compared to the rest of the sculpt where the sculpt was, you know, kind of plain. So in the end, I capitulated and agreed with Agems and just took out the scales. But I kept the little sculpt that I did on the fins just to kind of add just a little bit more texture to the character. Um, you know, and yeah, it worked out well balance wise, you know, um, taking out the scales on, on the tail definitely helps, um, not make the object look too busy in a way. So, yeah, but yeah, um, for the most part, this sculpt is pretty much done. Um, there were other things that I was kind of considering at this point, which is, Um, I was debating on how I was going to display this on Sketchfab because I knew that I was going to upload this on Sketchfab, right? And it was like, basically, um, two different ways where I could have displayed this on Sketchfab, which is to do a low poly and then use textures to bring in all the details, right? or upload a decimated version of my sculpt um, to Sketchfab, which in the end, I just decided to go with the decimated version of my sculpt because I figured um, it would have saved me some time, which it did. I mean, it really did save me some time. Um, doing the polyway um, would have led me to make decisions on how to do best approach it. I could have either, you know, um, let 
uh, Blender do the root topology. And they came up with a neat tool where it turns some of your models into polys. But I decided against that, like I said. Um, I could have also retopologized, but I decided against it too, just because I just wanted to save some time and yeah, I just went ahead and decided to go with the decimated version as my final display in Sketchfab. But uh, yeah, so those were like some of the last things that I was debating in my head and considering um, on how to display this basically. Everything else I'm doing for the most part is just, you know, small refining here and there. Um, things that I didn't really need to do because they weren't that much of a big deal. But, yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> this is the end of this project. I am so glad that you guys watched the two-part videos with me. Um, do catch all my December updates. There's quite a ton of them. And, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Good night.